Dang, I was going to ask you a question, but I'll ask you afterwards. You can't ask me right now? Private? Nope. Yeah. Okay. All right. You can ask afterwards. All right. Sometimes we're in the YouTubers. Sometimes we're in the middle of a conversation, and then Steven just presses record, and it's like, well. No, you said we can go. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we can go. I'm just saying I remembered a question I was going to ask you, but it's like, uh-oh. We're then, live. Then the lady says, you are now recording. Or I can't remember what she mm -hmm. says exactly. Okay. Oops, um, I forgot. Start summary. My favorite great. thing. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. I've got a cold open. All right. Let's do it. Truman Show. Okay, great. I'm ready. Okay. Check, check. Here we go. One, two, three. Click. One, two, three. Clap. Clap. One, two, three. Clap. Clap. This is the Truman Show bonus disc perfect movie podcast. It's not often when a movie has such a cultural impact that a psychiatric condition is named after it, but it does happen. The most recent example is PADS, of course, or post-avatar depression syndrome. While not officially recognized by the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, PADS was and is widespread enough to garner a label from some medical communities as thousands of people have reported experiencing it after watching the first Avatar movie in 2008 and then again after viewing the sequel in 2022. Symptoms of PADS include sorrow from feeling disconnected from nature, worries about the future of our own planet, feeling dissatisfied with modern life, and of course, wanting to see James Cameron's movies again and again. A quick search on my part for PDPTDS, that's post-Dune 2 depression syndrome, came up empty, but I'll keep looking as I'm sure it's real. A Google search that will get results, however, is one for Truman Delusion. Joel Gold, director of psychiatrics at New York's Bellevue Hospital Center, stated in an interview for Newsweek that he has begun using that label for a particular paranoid tendency in patients, the belief held by an increasing amount of people, all white males, that they are subjects of their own reality TV shows. Most, interestingly, seem quite pleased by their performances and several looked forward to their eventual million dollar payouts. Hey, wait a minute. Hasn't Anthony mentioned several times over the course of this very podcast that he feels like coincidences in his life are the result of Truman-esque, also a word I read several times on the internet this week, machinations? And isn't he also a white male? And doesn't he also like Avatar? Very interesting. We're the two gomers. We're talking the Truman Show, and this is Perfect Movie. Welcome, everybody, to Perfect Movie, a podcast where two regular guys try to save the universe one great film at a time. This is Anthony speaking, one of those two aforementioned gomers coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia. Hold on. This is Anthony, one of those two aforementioned gomers that may have Truman delusion with my friend Stephen <laughs> all the way out in Flagstaff, Arizona. I mean, it's not only Wait, the, Truman it's... delusion, Truman delusion from Atlanta, Georgia with my friend Stephen all the way out in Flagstaff, Arizona. I mean, it's not only perfect movie that you've been talking about this. I feel like you've been talking about Truman Delusion <laughs> for, for like 12, 13, 14, 16 years since the podcast no, started. No, dude, since 98, dude. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, uh, I don't know if it's a four thing, if it's a human thing, uh, but I read that same thing that uh -huh. you read uh -huh. about this. And we've talked about this so many times on the podcast, so many times during hanging out sessions with friends and stuff right. like that. And I mean, just as an example, dude, mm. like two, two examples. Okay. Recent examples. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I've mentioned it before on the podcast, but I'm telling you it happens all the time. Yeah. Uh, so remember when Truman is in the car and his wife, Meryl is in the car. Yes. And he's like, they go round and round. They go round and round. Right? So he's like calling out all the things that are going to happen uh -huh. on my walk every single morning, dude. So yeah. 
they're on a loop. He said, right. It's, it's, he sees yep. the same thing over and over again, three times or yep. over and over. And he's like they're on a loop. They go round mm-hmm. and round. Right. One of those mm-hmm. rare times in the movie where actually his energy is up. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I love it. This part of what, okay. Oh, yeah. Anyways, keep going. Well, no. So that happens where without fail, there's like four different cars mm-hmm. that go by me on my walk. Now I know people are on the same schedule, but I mean, I'm talking to the moment, like I walk and I don't go outside at the exact same time, you know, it's yeah. within five to 10 minutes, but okay. I'm telling you this one, there's an optometrist, which we're going to talk about in a soon to come episode. I mm-hmm. need glasses, right? You texted me, you texted me feverishly the other day. Yep. It's yep. time. And it's you, time. it was a screenshot of uh-huh. a note in mm-hmm. your notes app and it was just one of these typical anthony notes which is just <laughs> the title <laughs> nothing written in the note but the title said i need glasses <laughs> so thanks for screenshotting that yeah so yep. your your theory is this optometrist in your neighborhood is a hired hollywood actor yep and the <laughs> whole story is all about me uh people don't worry i'm not really this delusional but i'm t- it's weird it's like it's crazy how mm-hmm. often he you know the garage door opens mm-hmm. and he pulls out of his driveway and that happens every single morning yep uh but the the weird part though is that there have been afternoon walks and even a passeggiata oh, multiple yeah. passeggiatas that we've done as a family mm-hmm. same thing yeah uh and then the other one that i've always shared with you is we regularly see wisconsin license plates around here right and so i was just thinking maybe since we've relocated here the props department still has some of those license plates that they need to use okay (laughs) because they bought so many when you lived in wisconsin (laughs) Yeah. So they're like, oh, we still need to use some of those Wisconsin plates or like they're left over, you know? Yes. Um, that is, first of all, insane. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to go to the doctor, Joel Gold in New York. Um, I So it's, we, th- the way we talk about it, Jessica and I, we could talk about the um, Murphy's Law of Running where we will mm, be running okay. mm-hmm. down like a um this happened to us yesterday we'll be running for a while down a road half an hour 40 minutes not a single car mm-hmm. and then the first car we see mm-hmm. also there's another car coming the other direction at the same time mm. and then mm. we won't see any cars forever huh. and so it's like those people i guess those people got to work at the same time Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, in their Hollywood job to make our yeah. movie, and then yep. they were just like, "Oh, dang! We always, dang it, we always, they're gonna, they're gonna figure us out. We're always <laughs> passing them at the same time, <laughs> right?" Um, it's this like, I, I, I don't know why I think about coincidences a lot, mm-hmm. like the gray Civic thing or the the Subaru thing, right? Where you buy, yep, you buy a car, and then all of a sudden you see all. You see that car everywhere. Right. Now, Mm -hmm. my theory is, and I think this is widely held, is that I see those cars because I'm in one. And if I was in a different car, I'd see those other cars. And so there's nothing special about that. You're from Wisconsin. And so you notice Wisconsin license plates. It doesn't mean there are more Wisconsin license plates than Tennessee ones. Uh huh. It just means that we are obsessed with ourselves and yep. think no, mostly about ourselves. Right. And so yep. that's why this movie is spoiler alert. I think perfect because it feels yeah. so familiar. Yep. It totally does. And it's a movie that I think about so often, dude. Yes. Because of this and just because of a lot of other reasons that we're going to talk about, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm sure people listening can relate to this where they see patterns yep. or they see, I mean, even the thing you're talking about, like I saw the new Hyundai Santa Fe mm. the other day. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that yet? 
I don't think so. It's pretty cool looking. Let me look check it, it out. It's it's a new like I think Hyundai is must have gotten a new redesign person. Okay. And they're redesigning their whole lineup. Same with Kia. These these companies are coming up with pretty cool. Yeah, they look new cars way like the Telluride. Beefier. They look way beefier yeah. than they used to, right? I mean, these things look sturdier. Where a Hyundai, when I thought of a Hyundai before, it was very bubbly. Yeah. Same with Kia. Yeah, right, bubbly, yep. inconsequential, <laughs> right? Two thousands yep. cars. This looks right. like a beefy, modern, sleek car. Okay, and then you're seeing these all over. I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Well, yes, I saw one. Uh -huh. And I've never seen it before. And I was like, what is that? Because it's boxy. It's a total redesign. It looks like it. I mean, it's just just like the um, Bronco, right? Where yep, it's like right? all of a sudden this looks very different. Yep. Um, it kind of looks Land Rover-ish, uh -huh. right? In fact, you yeah. took a picture of a Bronco and sent it to me the other day. And I thought it was a Land Rover. Right. Kind of that retro boxy look. But it's so cool. But people then must, on the drive, people must think like, what, why are you guys always text each other this stuff? <laughs> just <ri> it's <laughs> just because, because we are. we're a repository for just <laughs> dumb stuff. Like, you know, it's just, it's just what we do. Yeah. Uh, it's how you, how you stay connected. Um, yep. But, you know, I drove back, I was, I was going to teach and then I drove back and I saw three or four more of those. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how did I never see that? And like, even me and Alex. When we were driving, when he drove me to Santa Barbara, we kept running into the same Tesla Cybertruck. Oh, really? Uh, and then I saw one here. And I've then seen one out, in Flagstaff. Okay. Uh -huh. In the wild. And then G Lee from uh -huh. our podcast. Yeah. She posted a picture or an Insta story of that one. And then I wrote her and I was like, I just saw that. You know, it's just weird. We it like is a, like one more. I was, you know, I've, I've been sort of seeking a spiritual director. Mm -hmm. uh, one day, hopefully yours will open up for me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I was hanging at my chiropractor. Ooh, I, uh -huh. I'm wearing the shirt actually. Must receive chiropractor. I saw. Yeah. I noticed that when we got on. This is not a paid advertisement, but I was just there earlier. And it's just like, they gave us this free shirt and it's so comfy. A um, free shirt? I want to go to this chiropractor. He rules. Yeah. But I was sitting next to this lady and huh. she was like, Hey, uh, she goes to our church and she was like, Hey, I, you're the bassoon guy. Right. And I'm like, yeah. She's like, we were just at your ASO concert last week. And I was like, yeah. And so we chatted mm -hmm. and I said, what do you do? She said, I'm a spiritual director. Mm. And I was like, Hmm, I've been seeking How a spiritual director. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Like, it's just Truman show, dude. Yep. And I, so I will just tell you that my dad loves it when you talk about that. Okay. It's one of his favorite things that you talk about when oh, you just awesome. say Truman Show, when you're talking okay. about coincidences. I don't know why he just really loves it. So he's going to love this app. Yeah. Um, okay. Awesome. Uh, I do. It's, I hadn't thought about the four of it all. You're a four on the Enneagram. Yep. Fours think they're very special. <laughs> think they're special. Want to be noticed. Think everything's all about them. Want to be unique. I'm the only one who does this. Um, yep. The Have you heard the term main character energy? It's a, mm, I, it's a, I have not. Okay. It's a Gen Z thing that people say a lot. That person has main character energy. Like, Oh, I get it. They're okay. pretty dramatic. They mm -hmm. want everything to be about them. The, mm -hmm. I think that the genius of this movie, I should save it to the trial, is that it's not about a person with main character energy. Yeah. They Good. get it right. And it's strange casting to put Jim Carrey, a guy that usually has main character energy and probably has up until this point, into this mm -hmm. role. Um, I don't know that main all people with main character energy are fours. But I would guess that a lot of them are. <laughs> right? Well, yeah. So that that's that's actually that's really interesting. Um, see, I think, uh, okay, I kind of think you actually have a good amount of main character energy. Okay. Yeah. Like I think a I seven. Mm -hmm. So I have my buddy Wes here also is a seven, mm -hmm. and he's very similar to you in this respect. That I like. He lights up a room. Mm. He's exciting and fun, funny. Mm -hmm. has that like 
you know, in Seinfeld when they get the main stage right in front of the door, that's yep. their spot. <laughs> like you own that spot, dude. And I actually, unless I'm with very trusted, safe people, yeah, which you never, you always see me in that because that's, I'm always that with you. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's with, it. Yeah. Like the folklore crew, mm -hmm. but in general, yep. My main character energy when with most people is super low, I think. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Whereas when we were in Sun River, dude, your mm -hmm. main character energy was like at a nine. And so was yours. So it was I, like, so I have, I have pretty good main character energy when I'm making a first impression. Yeah. And then I'm really, kind of like, like, I was impressed, dude. Then I'm kind of like, okay. <laughs> After a while, I'm like, you guys do whatever you want. That's one of the funniest things about Steven listener is <laughs> he literally in almost mid conversation will be like, well, I got to go to bed. <laughs> I mean, when we, when we hiked, remember when we hiked, I was like, yep. And, and we had that party that night. I was right. like, I just want you to know I'm pretty done. Right. For the day. <laughs> yeah. And you were like, really? <laughs> and I was like, yep, I'm pretty done. Now I'll turn it on because I have to. <laughs> Um, I, I th this feels like a four movie in a lot of ways to me. Yeah. yeah we pick definitely. a lot of them and probably there are a lot of them, right? Movies yeah. that fours on the Enneagram really connect to. I think that this is probably a pretty easy one for fours on the Enneagram to connect to. And it's kind of a beautiful journey that he goes through. Mm. Oh, it's so good. That dude. fours to be redeemed, I think might need to go through. So, mm, um, wow. uh, I want to get to the trial. Can we do the one sheet? Yep. Absolutely. All right. So the Truman show, I had to yep. look it up. Was it the, I, I was singing the same thing. It was the, the Truman yep. show. We're always wondering about whether there's the, the in there. Yep. It, it makes sense. Although we don't say it for Mr. Grauman's, uh, you know, his favorite thing. We don't say the Truman Show effect. You know, we just say Truman Show. Truman Show. Right? Yep. Or just Truman. Truman. Yep. Truman esque was a word that I kept seeing. Like I right, said, Truman -esque. In, my, in my in my cold open. Yeah. Truman esque feelings is something that you can say. I, I mean, it makes a lot of sense to me. This movie has a big footprint culturally. Yeah. It does. And we love it. And I can't mm -hmm. wait to talk about it. All right. The Truman Show, June 5th. 1998 it was released comes in at an hour and 42 minutes perfection mm -hmm. love Budget that when it comes million. when you're watching a movie for perfect for your podcast and you see yep. 142 oh, oh boy man so good <laughs> yep. i mean i would have taken more yeah and it, I, actually no it's it's perfect actually I, I think maybe it's the we'll talk about it but i do yeah. think that it's perfectly that 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 time yeah. is really good it's done Gosh. when it should be done you're right okay I, I need to take a note of that look look for editing later i wasn't gonna say that but okay there wow okay let's, let's i'll talk about it that. i i have i have one of my one of mine gets there i think so okay great uh budget 60 million gross at the box office 125 million us 264 million worldwide coming in at number 13 on uh, according to box office mojo okay Filmed on location in Seaside, Florida. I would love to go see that. I think that'd be that cool. That town? I mean, you mean? Yeah, so this was just filmed in a town, I guess? Or yeah. like one of those... These, the, you know, the, we lived in Florida for 10 yeah. years. Aaron uh -huh. and I, Florida and, uh, and then Miami also. So also Florida. So 11 yeah. years. Uh, there are just these pockets of we built a man-made... I mean, every every village and town and city is man made, but like, j like, it just like we bought this from land, the ground, right? yeah, and we excavated it. Mm -hmm. I mean, even think about what future Disney what they were gonna try to do. You know, like make those those like communities a celebration. Never... Yeah, was yeah. celebration Florida was supposed to be a town like this? I think, which was yeah, like why ever leave? Mm -hmm. Type thing. Yep. It's, it's the place you've always wanted and you never have to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. As uh, Ed Harris's character. Oh, I forgot to write the actors down. What? Sorry about that. It's okay. As Ed Harris's ca character, Kristoff, uh, 
Mm-hmm. You know, he's like, this is the world I've created for you. Mm-hmm. Perfect world, free from fear. Mm-hmm. You know, it's all, everything's laid out for you perfectly. Yeah. Right. And I think that's what they were trying to create. Mm-hmm. Uh, now they're a little insular, a little Stepfordy. Yep. Yes, definitely. Uh, and a little lack of diversity. Well, um, yeah. And, and Stepford is a good analog to this movie, right? Like where, mm-hmm. uh, like, what is wrong mm-hmm. here? Everything's perfect. And because everything's perfect, something is wrong. Yeah. Is this a genre of movie? Huh. I don't know. I really like it. Yep. Yeah, well, it's like you tried to create a utopia. Uh-huh. So that, that this isn't that's not really what this movie is about, but that's what they try to do for him. Right. Create a utopia free from any problems, any worries. Mm-hmm. But then it's just like bland and yep. actually creepy and weird. Uninteresting, mm-hmm. right? Like he's it's it's got they have to work mostly around him not liking it. Right. <laughs> right. After yep. he's at, like approaching his 30th birthday or whatever, like, I don't like this yep. thing that you made me. Right. And then yep. that's what all of their efforts go into trying to make it work. Yep. Mm. So interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um. All right. It was nominated for three Academy Awards, Best Supporting Actor for Ed Harris, Best mm. Director for Peter Weir, and Best Screenplay Adapted for Andrew Nichol. Mm-hmm. Um. I we could look up at the nine, uh, the two thousand Oscars or the nineteen ninety nine Oscars who won in those categories. It was mostly Shakespeare in Love. Okay. And Saving Private Ryan. That well, year, yeah, I think. Shakespeare. That's the year that Shakespeare in Love beat Saving Private Ryan in a ah. huge upset. Hmm. Mm, I remember that. Both Which great movies, movie? but Saving Private Ryan should have won. Yeah, totally. I mean, I go back. What, what episode was that? Go Gray, our <laughs> yeah. most recent, mm-hmm. where we talked about Saving Private Ryan when we were supposed to be talking about something completely different. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> At, other movies watch, around the, we always do that. I know. Other movies around the same time. I mean, I just read this list from top to bottom of Box Office Mojo, Titanic. Armageddon, Saving Private Ryan, Something About Mary, Waterboy, Doctor Doolittle, Deep Impact. Hello, I have uh, put a pin in that. I have something to talk about with Deep Impact. Okay, Partner. I mean, that's up there with Red October. Yep. Uh, I mean, for me, uh, you know, Star Trek Insurrection came out that year. I watched As Good as It Gets, just me and Ma Ois once. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't. I used to go to the Oasis, dude. Right, they, you'd have one of those ham sandwiches, a nutty bar, <laughs> some tea from the there. whimsical tea kettle. Yep, drink from the whimsical, like um, you know, uh, the seat. Take your seat, Randy. Here's a, what was that one? Have a seat, Randy. Have a seat, Randy. <laughs> um, and then for some reason, everybody left, and I didn't uh-huh. really want to go home. Yeah. And so me and my OS watched a movie, <laughs> as good as it gets. And that movie was. <laughs> As good as it gets. Helen Hunt falling in love with Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Insane. That movie yeah. is bonkers. Totally. And weird that we watched that. Yeah, um, definitely. Let me mention mm-hmm. from the one sheet. Screenplay, Andrew Nichol. Yeah. Which I would kind of love to know about. So it says adapted. So I don't know if it was a book first or if it, it was, was but it's just very, a screenplay. Very, like he just got an idea from this book. And then this movie is completely oh. different. So I still think they had to do it adapted because got it. It wasn't a completely original idea. I see. Okay. Um, so like the Colonel came from a book. It is not called the Truman Show. It. I. I, I guess I. I just. I read it sometime this week because I saw okay. that too. Adapted screenplay. This is an original movie. You know what I mean? And it's not a. There's no totally. book called the Truman Show. So. Um, right. I, I think sometimes the rules are weird. Okay. Um, but I looked him up a little bit. He uh-huh. also wrote The Terminal, which in some ways is very similar to this. Well, yeah. You know? It's, it's like, is it because it's this time frame that all these movies kind of taste the same to me? <laughs> Do you know mm. what I mean? Yep. It, it's about a kind of put upon guy. Yeah. And things happen. 
Yep. Out but of yeah, their control. I, you're I stuck in a fishbowl. I don't. Yeah, that's right. It's a fit. You're right. It's a fishbowl movie. I see. Mm. Yep. You're right. That's true. And I, I wouldn't I mean, have. I wouldn't it, have said I mean, the plot is similar at all. I just feel like. Do you know what I mean? It's like. Yeah. 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 yeah those absolutely. movies feel the same. Yep. <laughs> about a solo guy. I mean, Castaway, uh-huh. The Martian. Those are two other of my faves. Hugely star driven, right? Like this is yes. you go to see the terminal. Well, maybe because Spielberg directed it, right. but you go see the terminal because Tom Hanks. It is Tom Hanks' movie, right? Yep. Um, this feels a little different uh, because it's an idea, an ideas movie, as uh, Siskel said, or maybe it was Ebert. Right. You sent me that review this morning. Yeah. Yeah, and that was a good review. A couple things about that review. People should watch this review that struck me. One was that Siskel had to phone in because he was sick. Oh, right. Yep. And he never came back. He was oh, sick really? with the brain tumor that killed him in oh. this review. Isn't I didn't that, know. Isn't I just thought crazy? he just had a... Real... So this was towards the end of Siskel's life. Yes. I didn't know that. Okay. And so he was calling in recovering from something that he never recovered from so that's one interesting thing about that review um the other one is that like they were they were saying like movies are back Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yep they were calling their shot dude like this they said about this this is why we review movies like he hearkened back to college he's like he's like gene or roger this is reminded me of college and why I wanted to be a movie critic. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. A huge deal. And they, and the reason they said it was, this is an ideas movie, right? It's one that Mm -hmm. you go to see and then you talk about later and we don't see many of those anymore. And we hope we see a lot more from now on. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I mean, it made $269 million. Can you imagine a non blockbuster movie? typical typical blockbuster movie like this mm-hmm. making that much money today it it's awesome there's reason to hope for them in 98 yeah and they're at the they're right before social media not social media sorry reality tv right so they don't even know that this because i mean like this this is so prophetic we'll talk about it in the in the trial but mm-hmm. they didn't even know that we're on the precipice of a complete change of our you know tv culture yeah movie culture and yep i mean the 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 advent of of reality television (laughs) social media is going to change the fabric of (laughs) space-time i love this voice but here's what you're saying is exactly true this movie is so crazily prophetic in in that way too that that Mm -hmm. people are going to sit and watch big brother live feeds of big brother that go 24 hours on mm-hmm. the internet it's exa- i mean that that cameras would be everywhere yep that our culture is basically a voyeuristic culture mm-hmm. obsessed with watching other people mostly to judge maybe to be inspired or entertained uh, i mean i would say it's <laughs> probably 50 50 <laughs> the a big draw to reality tv is for you to say oh my gosh what an idiot <laughs> right like I, like gosh our life is like you know yeah uh, it's, it's so much better or, or yeah. whatever i mean i mean that's the, just before tlc where you know john and kate plus mm-hmm. eight little yep. people big world those were two of our i mean dude we had we me and aaron had like a reality show renaissance where we just we watched tons of that stuff when when was the real world on mtv when did that oh. premiere? Was that before or after? Is that pre Truman Show? It might be. I'm trying to find 1992. It's pre Truman Show. Okay. That felt like the breakthrough reality show, right? Which yep. was, but not everybody was watching it because it was on MTV. Only the youth. Yeah, the real world was like for Gen Z when they were millennials or uh, when they were Gen X. Uh, it's like the social media for Gen Xers. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. And it was titillating, and and scintillating, and oh man, it was all the kind titillatings. Of, it was it was and it was kind of wrong. Like you shouldn't be watching this, but people are watching it. And now addicted to it. It's probably I I don't know what it would be like to go back and watch the real world, but now it would probably be like tame. Oh yeah, probably. 
I no. I never watched it to be honest. Um, I I watched one season. I think one of the guys' names was Puck. Listener, tell me if I'm right. Was one of these guys' names Puck? Or Puck. Don't, Tuck e- or don't even look it up. But Survivor gonna... though, that yeah. was the one. Right, and that was 2000, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. So I don't think I I think no, I sir. think Truman Show was pre Survivor. Oh, absolutely. Because it was the summer after Aaron's freshman year. So yeah, two thousand. Okay, two thousand. Because we yep. watched we we watched that at Cecil's house. Uh, oh man, summer. I just looked up Survivor and I got a spoiler. Oh no, I won't Don't tell you who it is, but they say this person post elimination interview. Oh, give me a break. Never, oh. I will never <laughs> Google Survivor again during a oh, season. No, dude, shoot, top thing. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, yeah. What about Peter Weir? You a Peter, Peter Weir, Weir guy? He. So I love the name. I love an Ian and I together. Looks cool. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. So we've got that going for him. Yep. So we've got. He's Australian, I believe. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, okay. I, I think we've mm-hmm. got a master and commander, which I never saw. That's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Long. I, I was I'm I've never been a huge Russell Crowe guy. Okay. Um, gladiator? I Do you like love a gladiator? Beautiful mind. Oh right. Yep, I remember of seeing it. Well with Jennifer Connolly's in that. Oh geez. <laughs> well, also again, all all you need to do, dude, uh-huh. for a movie for me to love it is put a sweet score in there. And Sweet Beautiful score. Mind is incredible. Truman Show, can't wait to talk about. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Connelly, of course. Um, but <laughs> what about uh, also... what about Dead Poets? Do you like Dead Poets? Yep, so Dead Love. Okay. Dead Poets was huge for me as yep. a middle schooler. I saw it in middle school and just spring and sobbed and just thought, That's I wild. can't wait to become a writer <laughs> and just an artist and be sensitive. <laughs> Dude, you know what? Huh. I just thought of this. Okay. So Dead Poet Society was a huge departure for Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yes. this is a huge departure for Jim Carrey. Okay. Now, have you ever seen Witness with Harrison Ford? Actually, Peter no. Weir? Okay. Nope. Witness I saw it is kind of like Avatar in the Amish community. <laughs> okay. He, he has, this guy has to go on... Harrison Ford is a cop who has to go, a detective who has to go undercover in an Amish community to protect a witness of a murder. Oh, interesting. And it is, it just plods, it's slow. It is not a Harrison Ford, typical Harrison Ford picture. Deeply Hmm. dramatic, almost no action. So good. We just watched it the other day. Me and Jessica, Hmm. like, not even I didn't even make the connection that we were gonna watch Truman Show, but I was like, I remember watching Witness when I was a little kid. Is that good? It hmm. was streaming somewhere, mm-hmm. which is like the main reason to watch a movie. It's streaming somewhere. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. I mean, you're paying <laughs> for it. Even but... though we're paying for it, unless you're stealing your sister's, not stealing. <laughs> <laughs> She's freely giving it. Um, right, but. It, it's another like against type superstar movie. Hmm. Is this just what he does, Peter Weir? Yep. Man. I mean, I guess Russell Crowe, that was pretty standard, right? Yeah. Like a hero. Yeah. That I, makes I sense. Mean, like I said, I didn't see it, but um, yeah. I, I mean, when you talk about the 90s kind of flavor, mm-hmm. there is something different about this movie. Mm hmm. And so I think we need to put a put a pin in that and mm-hmm. talk about that in the trial. Because... Yeah, and certainly Siskel and Ebert noticed it, right? Like this yeah. is the kind of movie we've been waiting for. Yeah, I mean, I, I walked out of it. I mean, maybe, maybe when we talk about perfect movie um, or movie favorite movie experiences, maybe I'll mention this and that. Did you see um, it in the theater? I'm sure I did. Okay, I saw it I'm with sure Nate Hine, one of okay. my best friends in the theater. Yep. I think maybe I saw it with Nate, Maureen, and Ardeth. Even though I was a sophomore in college, we were still close, and we went to see this movie together. And we saw it. I cannot – you need to help me here. I cannot remember the name of the movie theater. It's a Target now. It's on the, like – 
It's like by oh. a really ritzy yeah. mall. Yep. Um, Hilldale? That's it. Hilldale. Hilldale. And yep. Hilldale would play like artsier movies. Am I wrong yep. about that? No, you're absolutely right. That's where I saw March of the Penguins. Will not be coming up on best movie experiences until we do worst movie experiences. Um, had to watch an erotic scene of two penguins <laughs> next to my mom. Erotic uh, scene, dude. <laughs> two penguins. <laughs> very uncomfortable well, how many how many when we do do worst movie experiences will be your mom is sitting next to you <laughs> definitely at least two several yeah several i can pull up uh yeah um yep so you're right that's where we saw um that's where we saw star trek 4 okay um that's where we saw immortal beloved Oh, um, okay. Uh, maybe Space Camp. I saw the C.S. Lewis movie there. Oh, okay. With Anthony Hopkins, I can't remember what it's called. I can't never saw that. Okay, it's it's good. Dang. Okay. Yeah, but that is a like that movie, the C.S. Lewis movie with Anthony Hopkins. It's not a movie you're gonna see at Point Cinema. Right on IMAX. Right. It is real like, D. <laughs> and so Truman Show, it felt right to see the Truman Show at Hilldale. Yeah. Yeah, you got to wear your glasses and like be like, well, with the advent of of uh, reality television coming, I mean, have you seen the real world? This is very similar to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I wear my glasses everywhere because I'm just a constant nerd, always right. nerd. Yeah. My glasses. But yeah, yeah, I didn't think that would be funny to have a intellectual conversation about the real world. Um, <laughs> can I read the back of the box? Yep. Oh, let me mention Rotten yeah. Tomatoes, ninety four percent critic, eighty nine percent audience. People love it. I don't think I've ever Baby. met anyone who does not like this movie. Wow. I think you're right. I haven't either. Me and Aaron watched it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely gripping. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's just so great. It's so watchable and rewatchable. And you're right. Yeah. Uh, I think I mentioned this. Jack and his friends went to see it in the theater last year. Ooh. It was one of these like Tuesday night five dollar. Yeah, they put it back in the theater, and that was the first time he had seen it, and he loved it. Nice. Oh, good. So it's translating to Gen Z. I, I, I think that there's a lot for them to see in themselves in this movie. Hmm. Wow. And in yeah. the current world, and so it's sort of timeless. Yeah. Here's the back of the box. He's the star of the show, but he doesn't know rhymes jim carrey You're wow poet, critics but you don't even know it <laughs> right this this copy this intern <laughs> is a poet and they don't know it or maybe they do jim carrey wowed critics and audiences alike as unwitting truman burbank in this marvel of a movie from director peter weir in parentheses witness dead poet society mm. about a man whose life is a non-stop tv show truman doesn't realize that his quaint hometown is a giant studio set a giant studio set run by a visionary producer director creator ed harris that folks living and working there are hollywood actors that even his incessantly bubbly wife is a contract player gradually truman gets wise and what he does about his discovery will have you laughing crying and cheering like few film stories ever have good news nation it's in color 142, like you said, rated PG. Love, love that. Something maybe I got. I got goosebumps when I saw PG. I mean, put this in somebody else's hands. They've got a sex scene. It, originally, you know? I I read it was some dark thriller, which makes oh, sense. Wow. Oh my gosh, my whole life is set in New York City. Like my whole oh. life is a thing, is like a play or something or. A, um, I think it was like actors were hired to surround this guy. It wasn't originally the original idea was not its own town. Um, okay, but it was like this noir thriller. Okay, and I like, actually want to see that. That would be cool. Uh, I mean, dude, you know, the firm is kind of like this. Actually. It, it tastes the same. The firm tastes the same as this movie for sure. It, it tastes the same, but he's also the main character and he doesn't know it. Have you seen The Man Who Knew Too Little, Bill Murray? 
I wonder you if know, you've ever I seen did. that movie. I don't remember. Okay. That would have been. That one is he gets caught I up. I swear. Like his brother buys him as a gift. Like it's a comedy. His brother Maybe buys not. him as a gift, like a, like an interactive play murder mystery thing that goes throughout the city. But then mm-hmm. somebody does get murdered and Bill Murray is in the play thinking he's in a play, but he's actually okay. solving an actual crime and a murder. It's, it's so good and funny. Is it's this, like the opposite is, of this. Is this post, um, like Groundhog Day, like yeah, late nineties? Okay, I'm almost yep. positive. Me and Alex went to that. Okay, and I remember very little because I'm just horrible, as you know, with memory. Unless I watch something it, twice, you know, or unless something is really impactful. Maybe Man Who Knew Too Little wasn't as impactful as the Truman Show. It, it wasn't. We know that. Okay. Well, yes, we do. <laughs> um, I really want to talk about Jim Carrey. I want to talk. Yep. I, we should just go into the trial. How about that? Let's do it. All right. Clap. Yep. One, two, three. Clap. clap. One, two, three. Clap. Clap. All rise. Hey, how's it going over there? Are you always watching me and like, uh, like uh is are there a bunch of cameras on me i think i might have uh td or tsd or whatever it is uh you're outside watching my uh, the tang gods bow to the tang gods can i tell you my uh deep impact connection real quick with this movie i watched the trailer for truman show Mm -hmm. and at the beginning of the trailer is a television that is like playing like somebody's flipping around on like Rugrats, a game show, oh, yep. that kind of thing. And one of the things they flip by is deep impact. Yeah. Yep. Um, President Morgan that. Freeman saying something about the comets coming or whatever, the asteroids coming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It must be the same studio, right? But it's so weird that deep impact was the same year. Yeah. How did they do that? How do they do it? How- I mean, I guess a little, little nugget of cross promotion. I guess so. You guys should also see Deep Impact. If you liked yeah. <laughs> yeah. the Truman Show, you'll love Deep Impact. Sort yeah, of tastes where, the same to me too for some reason. Where do you fit on the Deep Impact slash Armageddon spectrum would right. be the question. And we should do an episode on that someday because oh, I have too many thoughts on that. Yeah, we're going to do a versus episode of those two. All right, here we are in the trial. Here's how this works. We pick a movie we love. We love the Truman Show, and we talk through Mm -hmm. it. And then we act as its defense counsel and present evidence, evidences, Mm -hmm. getting the noise right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, You'll hear a noise like this when we present some evidence, and then we'll attempt to prove to you, our listener, and to one another that the movie is not only good, it's perfect. When we're done, y'all get to vote because I get a full vote. Anthony gets a full vote. And if 75% of you guys vote yes, that's a full yes. If we all three vote yes, that's perfect. We send it up to Locutus of Borg, Mm -hmm. who is uh, Jean-Luc Picard as a Borg. And he watches (laughs) these movies and he decides, you know what? It's better to be human. Yep. And he's reconverted because he has been converted into Borg. That's a lot of trouble, but he's reconverted to a human because he watches this list of movies that we're going to send up to him. I wonder, Perfect. I wonder if this Mm -hmm. movie will go up. It seems like a lot of people like this movie, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one went up. Yep. Gosh, I hope so. We have, we already have a great list going up. I think Happy Gilmore did not make the list, not surprisingly, but I think if, if this went up, it would be the fifth movie already this year. Um, uh, I really, really, really like the Truman Show. Yep. It's... I liked it from the beginning. I like it every time I watch it. Totally. You can start it at any point. Yep. You could watch it at any point. Uh-huh. Um it's uh it's I don't know. It's ultimately rewatchable. Yep. And we need to figure out why. Right. And why as a lot of these 90s movies have the same flavor, like you said, because mm-hmm. they're cooked in the same cast iron skillet, seasoned <laughs> yep. with the same That's right. oil. Um, you know, yeah. why, what makes this stick one stick out? Uh-huh. Um, 
Yeah. I have yeah. one reason, but I'm not ready to say it yet. Okay. It's um, a personal reason. Okay. Um, and some, and those are allowed, right? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's not my first reason. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pause there. Okay. I want to see if you've got one. Okay. Um, okay. Let, let me, let me back <laughs> up a little bit. Not too much. Okay, like I was born at this time, but often on the show, when we have talked about this movie mm-hmm. and when we have talked about movies with twists in them, mm. I think we talked about the Truman show when we talked the sixth sense. Mm -hmm. I will say, I wish I didn't know. Mm. I wish I was in Truman's shoes and I didn't know. And then the twist would be, he's been in a TV show. When I watched it last night, I was like, what are you talking about? Old Steven. Hmm. I don't think it, it would be as good unless the first shot is Kristoff telling you what is happening. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So actually, I wrote that in my notes. It wasn't an evidence, but just cold open. That cold open is, I always forget that it's there because you. Yep, me too. My my memory of this movie always is you get your first act. I'm, I'm chunking in. I think this movie is okay. so ingeniously structured. And the way I remember it is you get your first mm. act where you don't see the control, like the like the Apollo 13 control room, you know? Yep. Right, 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 right. You don't see that at all. You're just kind of living this episode of Truman's life, which is he he sees his dad and then his dad comes back from the dead. And, and then you go to the control room. That's the right. second act, the control room where you yep. see Kristoff and uh, 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 what's his name? Paul Giamatti. Giamatti is there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, and those Harry Shearer guys are... is giving the like the interview, right? The yeah, yep. Um, spinal Tap. The <laughs> Spinal Tap Simpsons. Harry Shearer. There he is, playing yep. like the Tucci in Hunger Games role. Right. Uh huh. Yep. Um. And then third act is kind of, you know, everything that's going on and it's Truman's escape. I yep. always forget that that cold open is close, close up on yep. your favorite and mine. Speaking of the firm, yeah, Ed Harris. Yep. But he's not, I guess he's not telling you everything that's happening, but he is explaining to you that this is not real right yep he sets it up yep kind of sets up the rules of the movie what you're Mm -hmm. about to see Mm -hmm. and um as they said on on the siskel and ebert review Mm -hmm. remember uh roger ebert was like he tried to write an article for what what does he write for the chicago sun times or whatever is he the Uh, tribune or sun times I i can never remember Okay, whichever one he is. Mm -hmm. He wrote a review, and he tried to make it so that you wouldn't know that it's a reality show because of the twist thing that you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, But then he saw the trailer, and the trailer was like, spoils the whole thing. Yeah, so maybe And he was like, oops, I wish I could rewrite that that review. Right. And that's why I also rewatched the trailer this morning, because I was like, yeah. Could it could it possibly do that? And it's like the trailer starts with Imagine if you were the star of your own television show. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, that just reminded me of that other one. Uh where they go and go in into the television show, black and white. Um Oh, is it a Woody Allen movie? No, it's not Woody Allen. Um it's the guy that played the first Spider Man. And... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pleasantville. Pleasantville. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Pleasantville is in this vein. That's right? another one, right? Yep. Same flavor, sort of. Where it's like, I thought I wanted a perfect world and I was wrong. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is too bland, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. I want to kiss whoever I, whoever I want. <laughs> I want to smell whoever sweater I want. Right. Yep right um yeah and so 
Oh, I don't I don't remember what we were saying now. Pleasantville. Oh. Uh and so what I, I think still what I would have wanted is to not have seen the trailer. Yeah. So if you would have gone into this knowing nothing. Right. That would know, have been so that, sweet. That would have been amazing. It would be really, really fun to watch this movie for the first time again. Right. Uh, at the same time, part of what makes it so rewatchable is the details. Yes. Yep, exactly. You know? Yep. And so the the reason I love I think the first act is my favorite. Well, no way. Mm-hmm. I really love the second mm-hmm. act when you are with Ed Harris. I know, but see, I love the third act, dude. That's <laughs> third act is my least favorite because I think the I think the boat stuff goes on too long. In are fact, you I, kidding me? I like fast forwarded through some of the boats, the oh, boat storm. Oh man. Okay, well you're not going to like my evidence later. Okay. <laughs> Oh no! It w- no, I didn't fast forward. I just watched it at one point five speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Which I love. I love one point five speed. <laughs> write that. Yeah. For, write that down for Gomer's favorite things. I, fr- I freaking love <laughs> one point five speed. That's good. So your evidence basically is the pacing and the editing. It's it's not First the one? editing as or... much as the the way they structure it is so okay. genius because the. Yep. They structure it like this is an episode of this show, right? Right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, it's uh, and mostly things are hidden besides the cold open with Kristoff, and besides the this is why I love the first act because it's still a mystery, right? To Truman, and so right. the things that I always remember most are the light falling from the sky, which is yep. the first five seconds. Yep. Perfect. And that's why I'm like, it's not a twist. They don't mess around with this movie. The light falls right when he walks out the door. Yeah. I guess it's probably the first minute. Um, the, And the radio in his car. Uh, yeah, the radio in the car, I think that's later, though. It is later, but those that's... are the things. Those are always the things when I think of my favorite moments in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason I like the radio in the car is because there's also the feedback moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. When everybody in town stops. Yeah. Like whenever you're doing a sound check at church or when you're playing yeah. a band and the feedback, everybody has to say something about it, right? Uh-huh, everybody yeah. has to like, Arr! and <laughs> that moment when the whole town, all the cars come to a stop, everybody stops walking for a second. That is so well directed. And it what lasts three seconds and mm-hmm. will and just from the first time I saw it has stuck with me, and so those moments are are if I'm gonna put like moments of the movie on the on the table at the in front of the court, it's those moments for me. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like the uh, another one I wrote down is when the rain is coming down. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's just on him. Mm-hmm. You know, like so. You, so you're kind of seeing behind the scenes on production. Yep. And then he like steps out of the rain, yep. and then the rain like follows him. Yes. And then he steps out of the rain, and the rain follows him, and he's like, uh huh. You know, that's <laughs> Carrie at his best when he's going. Aah. Yep. Like he do, there's there's just enough Carrie isms. Yeah. You know that that uh. That you're like that. That's part of why this dude was selected for this. Uh-huh. Year, was cast for this, you know, because he he can bring it when yep. needed. But and he has such a backlog of of us like loving that character that when we get a glimpse into him, yes. you know, doing that kind of stuff is is so good. Um, I loved also the like the elevator scene when he walks into the elevator mm-hmm. and it's just gone. Yeah, you know they don't it's think like, he's gonna walk into that building because the building yeah. next door to his building, and they just haven't completed the set, or they just never did, because they thought, yeah. well, he's never gonna get into that elevator. Well, it's, I mean, okay, so that that leads not to an evidence, but a question. Uh huh. That I mean, this like it's such a fun movie to pick apart and think about because, yeah, like why, what what is everybody doing all day? Like why? Yeah. Why are they? Why is there even surgery happening in that one room? She love, could just go to the green room. I love that surgery scene. 
I know. <laughs> like <laughs> making my primary incision. That uh, scene where it's like that scene, and then the one where they're like, these guys can't drive a boat. <laughs> they're actors. Right. They're <laughs> actors. Yeah. Or like, why? Yeah. Because everything that he does in mm-hmm. that, just just skipping around a little bit, everything he does when he's trying to escape yep. and go to Fiji, mm-hmm. which this also put a pin in, in the map for Fiji in my mind, mm-hmm. starting in 1998. I'm like, ooh, that sounds tropical and, and mysterious and cool. Speaking of Survivor, right? Now everything's in yep. Fiji and Survivor. Now, I think, whoa, do you, think, do you think they own yeah. an island I, there? I think because they just, yeah, every it's always there now. It's so slick and easy for them. They spend two months every, like twice a year there. It must be cheaper for them, right? Just to own an yeah. island and just do whatever they want on it. Yeah. I'm like, it's seaside Florida, basically. Uh, so kind of like, yeah, a- another prophetic thing. Like reality shows will be corporations, right? They will yeah. buy land. <laughs> they yeah. will build yeah. structures <laughs> yeah. um, because people like to be entertained. The Yeah. And so uh, that whole first, it's probably half of the movie, right? Yep. That first yep. act. Um, right. Uh, is just so like, it just gets my juices flowing every time I watch it because I like to see the details. I love to watch him be dissatisfied and then I love it when characters break. Yeah. Yep. So Laura Linney, who's a genius in this movie, and I think she should have been nominated. If Ed Harris is going to be nominated, like she is, she, I think some, I think that first half of the movie rises and falls on her performance. Yep. Juilliard alum. Oh, yeah. Oh, Philip Glass, too, who wrote the music. Philip Glass. Yep. Juilliard alum. All sorts of Absolutely. illustrious Juilliardians. Yes. Sweet. <laughs> your alma yeah. mater so, so this was the f- i think this was the first time that i remember seeing laura linney okay i can't remember what she then wasn't she in the squid and the whale after this mm-hmm. we and just then, saw like a irish movie that she's in with K- kathy bates um, okay. that's just like old ladies walking around ireland movie the one of our genres we love lately um i <laughs> yeah. know her most from say it's is it masterpiece theater or something on pbs she would introduce oh. it yep right um and she, so i love it when she breaks character i love it when the noah emmerich character breaks oh yeah marley breaks. yes also in frequency dude that's right we just talked Only- about frequency I only know that from the trailer, but I was like, hey, it's Marlon from Truman Show. Yeah, he's uh, what else? He was in something recently that I was like, I just, he's good in everything, this guy. Totally. Um, yep. But like, whenever Laura Linney, like, what's her name? I can't oh, Ma- Meryl. Yeah, Meryl, like, she'll, like, Jim Halpert style, look at the camera. Yeah, yeah, do a product placement, right? And no, just, so I love the product placements. But oh, also okay, sometimes yeah. when he's doing something weird, she'll oh, like yeah. wide eyed just uh-huh. like um I can't remember the term now for my Break film the fourth classes. wall. Yeah, she'll but she'll spike it. That's what she'll spike oh, yeah. the camera. Yep. Um and which you're not supposed to do because right. like you say, it's breaking the fourth wall. But I re- I watched her close this time and her performance is so funny and uh-huh. so like manic. Yeah. She is after 30 years of doing this or after 15 years since yeah. <laughs> she was that 30 year old cheerleader. <laughs> I know. I know they're the exact same age at their meet cute, which oh, so I thought those flashbacks are so funny. They are so funny. Although I thought their meet cute was stupid. Oh yeah. Cause first, like I thought, I, okay. So I thought she, first of all, I think she's incredible in this movie and she looks miserable. I think <laughs> that's why right? that's why she's incredible. Yeah, she is like so done with the truth. <laughs> no, dude, she's like sick of it. Like when he's like, "Why do you want to have a kid with me? Like you don't even like me. You can't right? stand me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so she does an incredible job with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I actually thought her acting was not, her acting was excellent. Yes. Um, but when she was the cheerleader, being like, "Oh, <laughs> I like hurt myself," <laughs> like I was like, "Oh man." Not good. Well, so I like that because she is new 
in that scene. She's new oh, yeah. I, to acting. Totally. Yep. It's a detail that I wonder if she's purposefully acting yeah. bad because she's not yep. a good actor yet. I thought that was, I mean, dude, that's like acting badly. Yeah. That's really hard. Actually, it's really easy for us. Well, it's easy for me. Well, for cause... most people. But for Laura Linney to act badly. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be good and then to look bad. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought she was amazing and I love exactly what you said. I just I just don't know. I, I like thinking about why why when he's trying to escape to go to Fiji and he gets on a bus to go to Chicago, mm-hmm. why is that bus there? Yeah. Why are those people on the bus? Yep. Why is Marlon stocking the vending machine at all? Because yep. he he stumbles upon him. I think about it most probably that in that scene. Why is okay. Marlon stocking that? Last night I thought that's his job. Right. In the show. Right. And I guess there are a lot there are a lot of cutscenes with him. Where he oh, actually is those. feeling, I, I don't know that they're watchable, but I just read this on whatever, on okay. Wikipedia, I think, where yeah. that character is pretty remorseful about what he's doing. Yeah, man. I, okay, so I think we're kind of bounced, like, here, uh, this isn't my evidence, but I'm just going to throw it in because we're talking about it so much. Okay, great. Oops. Uh, just pretend I played the sound effect when I okay. re-edit it later. Uh, it's going to my Bluetooth. Can you still hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay, edit there. Me, sorry. Um, just the cast. Yeah. This way we can talk about continue talking about the cast and Jim Carrey. Right. Um, I think he does an amazing job as well because, for example, in the scene where they're gonna discover discover his dad. So ba- basically, Truman is going through a midlife crisis, and mm-hmm. he's like totally onto the fact that something is up yeah um which is the other main thing i love to think about when i Mm -hmm. think about this movie is why do they have all this stuff why are they on that bus why is Uh the surgery happening why is he stocking the vending machine um is peter kraus still hanging in the lawyer or the insurance office waiting for him to come to work that day uh so i think that i think the answer to all those questions is yes they have Kristoff has built this world. It's so revolving around him that everybody is being paid either to sit around or to actually stock vending machines. Yeah. So is it actually a functioning town where those vending machines need to be stocked? And that's <laughs> I, his job? I like, to, I like to think so. His actual <laughs> job is actor. Right. Playing the part of Truman's best friend. But is it but, you're an actor and you also have a you know a job? I uh, like to think that maybe for that character in particular. Obviously, it's not true for the doctor because he doesn't know how to do surgery or the boat guy. Right. Um, I don't know why, dude. I'd just like to think that Noah Emmerich's character in particular actually stocks vending machines. <laughs> okay, I, I'm down. I think I think that makes sense uh-huh. because. I mean, you're you're on an island. Yep. And the vending machines need to be stocked. Mm-hmm. So when Truman's around, you're his best friend. When he's not, you're stocking vending mach- vending machines, mm-hmm. and and you know, they probably have to have a hospital. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Um, but the the second thing I like to think about is uh-huh. when is Truman aware mm-hmm. of this? Yeah. And so we get the light falling moment, right? Yep. We get the the rainstorm, the car. Um, has th- that stuff been happening? Or maybe this is your question. Does he just kind of notice this is too weird? Yep. Before we see him in the movie. He's already kind of going that direction. I totally think he's going that direction. Um, well, and be- there's that and- flashback with what's her face. Sylvia, where uh-huh. she's like, it's all fake, it's a show, ah! and they tell him, <laughs> Oink. right, um, that so, she's that she's crazy, but I'm not sure he believes that. No, he doesn't believe it, and you're right. He's he's outside of 
he wants to get to her. Mm-hmm. He's making that, you know, the gla- glamour mags. Oh, for my wife. Got to get my glamour mags. Uh, yeah. You, you know, he's always trying to call Fiji, trying to find Sylvia, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, right. He's trying to escape. Um, but one thing that made me think about the awareness, and then mm-hmm. we'll get back to casting, um, is at the very end, he does his tagline. I love the tagline. Of course we yep. do. And is it possible that he's known mm. that for a while? Yep. That w- even when he does that tagline, I mean, like, like when he's writing on the mirror and he's like, that one was for free, right? Like, is he acting? Yeah. Does he know they're watching? You know, that's after she looks at the cameras and said, somebody help me stop him. Yes. Right. And I think that's why, that's why they get rid of her. Uh-huh. Right. Because she broke immediately. The rules. Right. Oh yeah. Um, it, the, and so may, maybe this is, I, I started talking about this in the open that it just feels so familiar because sometimes when you're middle-aged, yep, you think, what's all this for? Is this all just like a, I don't know that you think, is this all just a reality show that I'm in? Right. But you do think, is there more to life? And so this is a very, is there more to life yes. movie? Yes. Is there more than this present moment that uh-huh. I'm in? Like, is there another realm or reality or, yep. or totally? Is I mean, there more I've... to this small town? Is there more to this boring yeah. job? Is this more, is there more to uh-huh. this? Set the this girl I never really loved, yeah. That I married, um, uh-huh. and so I like that it's literal. Yep. It, that Peter Weir and what's his name Nichols takes it from kind of that feeling that everybody has, and makes it. Guess what? This guy is in. He's wondering if there's more. There is. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I just love that kind of movie where it's something that everybody can relate to. I think I talked about this when we did get out, which is like, it's a fear of a lot of people and it actually is real. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> and like so, he was paranoid, but actually for good reason. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, and then, and then what do you do when you think, uh, every doesn't everybody think this way? Oh crap! It's only real for me. Is such a yeah. cool idea. Yeah, which kind of goes against our uh, what would you say to your younger self episode when mm-hmm. we were talking about people are thinking about you a lot less than you think they are, <laughs> right? So everybody's thinking about Truman, <laughs> right? Like everybody is their own Truman. Um, yep. but um, oh, dude, also perfect scene is when. They have to go back to uh, their um, first places. What the morning? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. First, the, yeah. I think that? it is called first places. Is that right? Yep. First positions. Yeah. For go back mm-hmm. to first positions yep. and that Philip Glass music playing uh-huh. with this with this crane cam shot of everybody standing still, just standing there waiting for Truman. Yeah that that's an iconic scene. Um, I love it. I just yes. wanted to throw that back in with the when the radio starts speaking, when the rain comes down, when the elevator. Yeah. Um, okay. So back to casting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Noah Emmerich, amazing. Yeah. Um, I I think his acting is so is is best when well, first of all, breaking the fourth wall is amazing when he's yep. he's not actually he's not breaking the fourth wall. He's talking to Kristoff. Yeah. He, when he through, says like he's gone, and they cut yeah. the feed for the first time in thirty years or whatever. Yeah, amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but my favorite bit of acting for him was in the father scene right uh-huh. before that, when he's in his midlife crisis, and he's like, "If everybody's in on it, then I'd have to be in on it too." Uh huh. And you can, dude. He friggin' deserves an Oscar for this because he knows he's lying and bas- basically, like, think about the whole you know, free Truman movement. 
yep. outside of the show. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he has any awareness of that. Right. But he's like, this guy is being tortured. Mm-hmm. Just th- That's one reading of it. Okay. Yep. Um, imprisoned. Imprisoned. Yep. Enslaved. Uh-huh. Uh, Matrix style. Owned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He needs the blue pill. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, the Matrix. This is Come totally that this, too. Yeah. Like, t- next year. Yep. It's is crazy. there another world though? Like yeah. it's it's the is this the real world? Yep. Or am I in the matrix? Right? Like so that's like on par with am am I in the middle of the Truman show? Right, exactly. And I do think that that maybe is the best scene of the movie because it's one of the first times that you see Kristoff controlling what's happening uh, perfect, and controlling yeah. it so well. So yep. that's that scene that you're talking about. And I'll just go back to my evidence of the three act scene is the transition scene from act one to act two. Yeah. So, yep. and it's such a great way to do it, which is mm-hmm. Christoph isn't just like controlling the traffic. Right. Or even the sun and moon. Uh-huh. Yeah, he is weather. controlling Truman's relationships. And so mm-hmm. he feed the first time you hear Christoph feed a line is when mm-hmm. he says to Marlon, I would never lie to you. Oh, and, and then Marlon freaking... says, I would never lie to you. <laughs> but and I, it I is don't... like, this is, is that the best moment in movie history? I don't know. Yeah, like some of the best acting I've ever seen. And I don't know yes. if I'm reading into it, my own emotions and how yep. I wouldn't be able to do that. Mm-hmm. But the actor that plays Marlon, Noah Emmerich, yep. and then we don't know what his real name is in the Truman show. Which is weird. Right. That. Right. So it's his name is in the, it would be kind of cool if his name was Noah Emmerich in the movie. I don't yeah. know, but yeah. um, you're right. He has another name we don't know. I love uh-huh. that. So he's no more Noah Emmerich playing Bibbidi Bobbidi uh-huh. playing Marlin. Marlin. Yep. Um, but he has to deliver that, knowing that he's acting, but Truman isn't, uh-huh. and. The words that are coming out of his mouth are creating a narrative that Truman is living out yes. and is feeling in his very bones. Like I like bro, Steven or bro, Marlon, I think I'm going crazy. Yeah. And he's actually not. Mm-hmm. But then Marlon's like, you're not going crazy, but I'm going to feed into you feeling like you're going crazy. Yeah. By telling you a lie. Mm hmm. So two other layers that I love about that scene are, I always wonder, is uh, Truman acting at that point? Because he's figured it out. Because the next thing Mm. we see Truman do after that is escape. Yep. You're totally Um, right. Yep. And so I thought about Mm. that a lot last night. And then my favorite thing about that scene is they, it's like a, it's like a, what do you call it when it's a crossfade? Uh Uh-huh. Because you start then seeing the control room. That's the first time you see the control room. Okay. Yeah. And the, and um, that part where Philip glass himself is playing piano. Yeah. Yep. And oh. Christoph's like, raise the music. They bring, they bring the dad back from the dead. in a very kind of soap opera type amnesia thing. Right. Yeah. And then it shifts to, 20 minutes or so of exposition and explanation of what we've already seen. And Hmm. that second act, I am just riveted because I want to know everything about how this works because I'm a rules guy. Yeah. And they do kind of a Mr. DNA type info dump, Stanley Tucci and the Hunger Games interview Yep. Where he just gets to ask, how do these things work? How long have you been doing this? Yep. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. and I just eat that up. And Peter Weir also mm-hmm. wrote, did you read this? He also wrote a, uh, like a prequel about Kristoff. Oh, no. It's like an essay. Dude. It's probably like, I read it in like five minutes, 10 minutes. Okay, cool. And it's the same kind of, I got the same kind of thrill from that. Like, I want to know more about how this works. That whole thing about, mm. like, it's the only structure besides the Great Wall of China that you can see some, from space. Yeah. Um, When you see the baby Truman looking up at the camera in his, like, mm-hmm. that little twirly 
toy at the mobile. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I just all the casting in the control room, including Harry Shearer and Giamatti, are so good. Um, yeah. And then you start, you get a, you, you start hearing about, like you were saying, the Truman Freedom Coalition or whatever it's called. Uh-huh. Not everybody. Yeah, because Sylvia about calls this. in. Right. Yes, that's how they do it. I love that. That's that's so good. Yep. Yeah, I totally nerd out in that whole that whole scene. Mm-hmm. Perfect pacing, dude. You're yeah. so right. Yep. Like, and I mean that would that would play into perfect editing, to yep it's it's they're they they do a lot with a little Mm -hmm. Um, yeah they do so just you know they never sit and eat a meal together but you can see that they eat meals you know they're in the kitchen but you don't you know oh and um, i love that he's eating he's eating breakfast and they're filming that and then they do picture in picture oh yeah 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 Love. So that you can still keep an eye on him but you Uh get the interview the christoph interview Yep. And that is just like world building that I love because they don't explain that, but you're like, oh, this is how this works. You always yep. have eyes on on Truman, even yeah. if they're doing the flashbacks or the interviews and stuff like that to keep viewers entertained. Yep. Even though that interview probably got such high ratings. Uh-huh. You know? Yes. Like the creator uh-huh. himself, Christoph. Uh, is gonna, you know, be interviewed, and you're gonna see behind the scenes footage. Yep. Um. Yeah. No, I I totally agree, dude. Um. I, I'm just yeah, gonna, I, I think... even though I already said it, I am gonna chunk in on what I think is. I I just always have a lot of respect for when they're able to do info dumps, and it doesn't feel like an info dump. And mm, so okay, yep. All the way back to our first episode of Perfect Movie, and I talked about Mr. DNA, and I put that as an evidence is. You learn everything you need to know in an entertaining way instead of yep. just somebody sitting down and explaining it to you what midichlorians are. Right. Or Praxis is their key energy production facility. <laughs> uh, you and audience, I yep. need you to know this fact. <laughs> Thank you, Sulu, uh, <laughs> for telling us that. Um, Kronos won? Um, yeah, so... I know that it, that's just that's just absolutely perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, back to casting real quick. Yeah, Ed Harris rules. Ed Harris rules. I think his him in the final scene, his conversation with Truman is incredible. Me like too. When he's, I, when he's I talking, do too. You know, rec- recollecting, uh, you know, the pivotal moments of Truman's life. Yep. He he's like a he's like a dad. And he's he's I I don't sense there that he's trying to manipulate. Well, maybe, maybe he's trying to manipulate. But also, you hear his true like, um, mm. he really does love. I don't know if that's yeah. the right word. Truman. I it's think kind so. of this like Godfather weird conversation where <laughs> it's it's so yep. crazy. Well, think about it. his name is Christ. Yep. Sort of right. Yes. I don't. I. No. I. I, mean, I thought of that too. Yeah. Um. Christoph is just a what a name. Yeah. It's it's kind of German, and it's just no one last name. name. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. it's like Cher or Madonna. It just had like an umlaut over the O. Christoph. Yeah. Or something. It's, <laughs> it's like if Elon Musk were to say, "I'm just getting rid of the Musk." Elon. Just call me Elon. Yeah, wow. um, it, it's one of those things. Um, but it's just like Christoph is such like a <laughs> right. It's it's like European sort of. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. They, they try to do that in like uh, um, Zoolander. Um, uh, I you know. thought about Zoolander too. <laughs> it's a totally Zoolander model name. Yeah, <laughs> Christoph Wesh. <laughs> um, yeah, he's so uh, hot right now. Stuff. yeah yeah um let's talk about jim carrey a little bit okay i i all i've got left is jim carrey i want to hear oh, okay. what you I... like about the final scene maybe we can talk jim carrey to close okay that's okay so we'll we'll punt that till the very end okay um okay 
I have two other quick evidences then. Okay, great. First one, chunk. Uh, I think it's genius how they basically scripted his and this and this is terrible but it's great writing mm-hmm. um they scripted his fear to leave around the sea mm-hmm. genius yeah so i agree he can't leave and that is what makes uh like him escaping at the end mm-hmm. so powerful because he's governed mm-hmm you know by this main fear yeah the main fear of the sea it's it's and a so great the, it's great writing yes yep yeah so i think that um that's incredible because yep. the way he finishes the movie and goes into his real life i don't know what happens after the movie he and i love Sylvia, to think about that too it's kind of a sleepless in seattle thing right or yeah that's what i that's what i mean is like it ends and you're just like what what next Yep. So many thoughts well, about what could be next. I mean, I picture Kristoff going into a similar depression that Robert Zemeckis did post Forrest Gump. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, where he's yep. just like, my life's work is over. What am I going to do now? <laughs> right. Okay. Um, he will be the and... most famous person in the world for his whole life. So that's yep. also weird. So he's constantly hounded by paparazzi. Horrible. He might want to come back. Let's do a sequel. He tries to break back in uh, wow. uh, the rock style. Yep. Like, yeah, he comes back with Sylvia. They actually have kids. Mm-hmm. They put in, uh, in their rider, like you can't, you can only watch us for two hours a day, but then okay, great. They're in they control. end up falling apart. Like every TLC family though. So this it could you... be a very 2024 movie uh-huh. where Truman Show was very 1998, right when reality TV yeah. was coming. And now what is it like when you're hounded? Mm. And where can you escape? Okay. And does... I, I want this to be a trilogy. Kristoff. Mm. And then, so a prequel. Yeah. And then Truman in 2024. Okay. I love a, I love a Kristoff prequel. That is such what a good if... idea. Okay now she's in charge of like the free Truman movement is and is so anti the show. Yeah. But what if Sylvia and Truman had kids uh-huh. and went back? Right. This is like a twisters where where uh-huh. I'm sure it's going to be their kids in that movie. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, this already. I don't know that for sure, but Absolutely. like the Top Gun Maverick, it's gotta be Goose's son, right? Right. <laughs> Who's yeah. back? It's always their kids. Yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> that that yep. could work. Um I, I agree with you that I really like the way that they set the C up as kind of his nemesis and they kill his dad off to make sure that yeah. happens. I think that's yep. darkly funny, right? Um, yeah. And then his redemption is on the C. I think my – it's it's just like a very small quibble, bro. I just think it goes like a minute too long, the storm. Oh, Okay. Got it. No, no. I, I love the idea. I just sometimes think like I get what a I get what a rainstorm a, a boat storm yeah. looks like. I could, yeah. I could, I don't care about that scene. I okay. care that he fought through his fear. Yes, that his freedom was in pushing through his fear. Mm-hmm. Huge. Uh, which is like I I think that is the way people become free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In real life. And, I, and, and this is what I was teasing in the more in the yeah. beginning, which is I think it's especially maybe especially important for a four, yeah, to have the journey of it's better. Life is better when it's not all about me. Mm. There's too much pressure, even though I think yeah. I want it. There's too much pressure when life is all about me, mm-hmm. and so I've seen all sorts of people redeemed out of a life that is all about them. Mm. And a Dude, lot of it is, is breaking so through that fear of, but isn't life going to be harder if I embrace that fact? And then them mm-hmm. really realizing, yeah, it might actually be more uncomfortable and harder, but it's better. Giving your life away is better than receiving all the accolades of all the world. Yes, exactly. And, and really seeing it's not all about my pleasure, my stuff, huh. Uh-huh. Being taken care of, being safe, 
being secure. Life is about mm -hmm. more than that stuff. And I love the journey. It's it's another <laughs> one of these, like, that's a great idea. Yeah. We get to watch it actually play out in this movie. And it's so cool. Mm. Love it. So I love the way he pushes through fear. Uh -huh. um, lastly, I mean, I think the cinematography is unbelievable. This might be one of the first movies where I saw. So this is just the under the Anthony. I like how I love how it looks, sounds and feels. Yeah. Makes me feel. Uh -huh. um, cinematography is genius. Hidden cameras. Incredible. Yep. Uh, all like there were a couple shots like in Castaway. Remember, like when you follow the FedEx package mm -hmm. uh, there, th this is starting to be a thing where the cameras are small enough. Yeah. And they're playing with this. And so they do that really brilliantly in this. But the last thing other than the last thing and Jim Carrey that I love about this movie is the way it sounds, dude. Yeah. So what let do you me, think about let me chunk score? in. Let me chunk in. Uh huh. All right, dude. So I love how this movie sounds. I listened to this score all the time back in the late nineties, early two thousands, had this uh -huh. on CD. You know, the CD is just Truman on like at, at, uh, um, you know, in New York times mm -hmm. square sleeping. Yep. Sleeping on the big mm -hmm. screen. Yeah. It's a great image. And I love that. I just think it, it, it's when, when we were talking at the beginning about what makes this the same flavor but different mm -hmm. it's philip glass yep i agree so for the listener that doesn't know philip glass is one of the most legendary american composers not film composers but like Juilliard modern composers trained, yep. you know nadia boulanger he studied with her in paris like the absolute legend mm. um and so and his main instruments is his main instrument is keys right Piano. yeah okay yep so he grew up uh his his father owned a record shop mm. and i mean dude i did a friggin deep dive on philip glass for this last week um he's cool but yeah so his dad owned a record shop and and basically he would get all the discarded records that people didn't want to buy uh-huh and so he just listened to them and study them mm. and uh you know he became a, a composer trying to find his own voice and basically he ended up kind of resonating with um minimalism yeah. uh like repetitive minimalism sort of thing i don't exactly know how to how to characterize it okay i mean if you want to take a deep dive and listen to einstein on the beach his opera that was premiered at the metropolitan opera i'm writing i down. listened to that a bunch in the before this movie came out okay it is super weird okay um it's incredible. I remember my bassoon teacher at UW Madison loved it and that went to see a performance and he told me all about it and huh. I was super impressionable. Sure. So Aaron does not like it. <laughs> okay. Like I, I wonder I, I probably won't is my guess. It might be too weird. No. You 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 it'll be really interesting to listen to for a couple minutes. Uh <laughs> and then I can stop. <laughs> yeah. But his, his the way his voice developed is so interesting. Uh -huh. um, there's a lot that I think you would love. Okay. It, um, but he's got a unique voice, and this is a very commercial version. Mm. And I, now I don't know because I guess the the when you look at the music, it actually says written by Burkhard von Dahlwitz. I think they they must be like it says composer, right? So is, right. that, is that different? And then I read that a lot of the music, though, is composed and performed by, right, Philip Glass. Yeah. So what I'm what I want to know is, uh, are those? So like I, I followed to the end of the credits uh -huh. uh, this this last time around, and these these pieces: "Dreaming of Fiji," "Flashback," "Anthem," "Part One," "Anthem," "Part Two," "Living Waters," "Truman Sleeps." That's obviously about Truman. Yeah. Some of them almost seemed as if they were pieces that he had written yep that before happens before this movie actually like they are pieces of his music yes yep that happens um but i mean truman sleeps sounds probably like it was written for the truman show yeah probably my favorite score moment is when he is really going it's the elevator part it's when he's in the middle of the road and he the bus almost hits him and he puts his hands yep. up 
I love and it's that. Like probably the fullest score moment. Is it the do da da do da do yep. da da do da da yep. da 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 yep. da yeah. Um because it that stands out, I think, from other score moments that seem like they could be Philip Glass writing it for the show in real time. Mm, yeah. Well, so that so okay, so that's really good that you said that because like at the end mm -hmm. when you know it's kind of like this triumphant uh you know moment when he says good afternoon, good evening, and good night. And it's yeah. kind of like sort of sounds a little chintzy and not very Hollywood. Right. I don't say chintzy as, as it's not not a bad thing. It, but it sounds a little thin. It sounds just kind of like a yep. little M1 chord keyboard and like a little <laughs> yeah. big cymbal crash, you know? Yeah. But you're exactly right. He's writing this in real time, scoring real life. Yeah. In real time, just with like you saw like two guys at a keyboard or a couple and, keyboards. And one of them is Philip Glass. Right? Yeah. Playing, playing like I want his name in the movie to be Philip Glass. I think he's credited as like yeah. piano player or something like that. But yeah. like I would love if Christoph hired Philip Glass to just sit and play <laughs> the right. score behind just, Truman's yeah. life. It's so cool. Yeah. So I love that. I mean, I love yeah. Truman Sleeps. That might be my mm -hmm. favorite. Um, I think the swell yeah. into the dad coming back. Mm -hmm. That's great. Is an incredible moment. Mm -hmm. uh, great acting by Ed Harris there where he's like, like you know, like tearing up. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, I love, uh, so it's Chopin Piano Concerto number one, second okay. moment, uh -huh. is underneath the whole montage of him and Sylvia. Oh, okay. Is, it's all, so it, so these are things that make this movie stand out differently than so many others. And then when I was in the theater, I was like, man, this is so good yeah. and different. Everybody knows I'm a J-Dubs. Mm-hmm super fan yeah but this sounded so different and then using chopin like this mm -hmm. or mozart when he's driving to work yeah um and i just gotta say when uh sylvia and truman they steal that kiss there's uh -huh. a bassoon solo hello hubba hubba hello <laughs> and i've played that piece many times i think i played that in the cleveland orchestra actually oh. and i played that solo and i always think of sylvia and truman wow so no, it's pretty fun. that that should escalate it to perfect for people. There's a bassoon yeah. solo during that kiss. It's a good kiss. Too. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> it is um, really good. We we're running short on time. Yeah, I would love to talk about Jim Carrey. Maybe we can talk. Okay. What I'd like to talk about is where this falls in his filmography. I think we can push that to the um to the result show. OK, because Great. I think it's really interesting. I do want to say in the main on the main feed. That what I was thinking last night was, is this how Jim Carrey actually feels at this point in his career? Wow. That he has gotten so huge. Mm -hmm. He was making $20 million per movie. And this one, he said, I only need 12. $12 million. Wow. I only, only 12. need 12. <laughs> right? Wow. wow. Like, is he perfect casting for this movie? Which I think he is, right? I even mm -hmm. I can see Robin Williams in this movie, but I think Jim Carrey is the perfect casting for this part. Did you look into anything where they cast other possibles? Um, they had Robin Williams read for it. Really? Okay. And they had Gary Oldman read for it, but I think that was bef that was when it was still that noir, darker movie. Sure. Okay. Um. I honestly think he's perfect casting because he knows how this feels in his life, which is that everybody, wherever he goes, is like, that's Jim Carrey. Hmm. And he doesn't yep. really know what to do with it. Hmm. And so he's just able to try to act normal. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But if you're Jim Carrey, you can't walk down the street yep. without everybody, with without affecting everything that's around you. And so I just thought, I was just thinking a lot about Jim Carrey in this, in the 90s. 
mm-hmm. biggest superstar, probably one of them. I mean, one of I mean, there there's some analogs to Adam Sandler, mm-hmm. and when he made his transition also to doing more serious movies, yep. yeah. But this, you're like, oh, Jim Carrey is an incredible actor. It it comes out of nowhere, I feel like. And that's why mm-hmm. I want to talk about the filmography. Because everything leading up to this, you would not ever think he could act like a person. Yep. He was... I mean, leading up to this, we've got Ace Ventura, Cable Guy, Liar Liar, Me, Myself, and Irene, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber. None of those people... Liar Liar is the closest you can get to a regular guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that, that performance is big. Yeah, totally. The overacting. Uh, I mean, it's in the the, the closing credits. She's like, overactor. Um, <laughs> right. So, but, I mean, like, yeah. I, I, I just, him making this move, and Peter, we were taking a risk on him, was, like, so genius because of where Jim Carrey was in his career. Mm. Uh, and I just think he's able to challenge, cha- challenge channel some mm-hmm. of his real life and how he really feels into the performance, and that makes it perfect for me. Mm. I'm with you, dude. Yeah, yeah. I just I think he's incredible. I remember liking him also in the Majestic. And was that before yeah. this Majestic? I think maybe was. Is that before this? I like I like him in the Majestic. I like him in a lot. I like him in almost everything. He kind of grates on me in Ace Ventura. Yeah. Um, I get it. I think his performance in Dumb and Dumber is way funnier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that that is one of the like canon, absolute canon movie. But when he um, goes oh, in this movie, he's kind of like Ace Ventura. He's, he's Ace Ventura a little bit. Yep. Yeah. And it's you just a little l- nod. You said it before, which is like when that happens, you're so happy to see it yeah it's almost like a relief to you yep oh right it's jim carrey and he's able to be jim carrey so there's something in truman that really wants to be that it just Mm. is so it just works for me yeah it's so so good yeah let me just mention uh because we didn't get time we're running out of time Mm -hmm. but just that i think the last seven minutes of this movie are our pin drop Mm -hmm. from when he hits from when he hits the uh the the sky the wall the music just cuts which i also love that also makes leads me to believe that somebody's playing it live yeah absolutely they're so surprised by that they stop yeah (laughs) yep but but then the 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 score starts and Uh you can't hear him yeah that's right right so he's yep. pounding on the wall. He's getting so mad. Like, I mm-hmm. got to get out of they here. Cut, they cut the they cut the sound effects out of that part. Great move. Mm. Yep. And then and then just, I don't know, man. I, I watched that because I, I, I needed the last 20 minutes this morning. Uh-huh. Just because the way our schedule worked out. I, we and Aaron right. only watched an hour and 20 of it. Uh-huh. And we're just like, we got to go to bed. <laughs> and the last, I was, I, I was just, my jaw was on the floor. Because uh-huh. I haven't watched the last bit of this movie in, I mean, at least a decade. Yeah. And I, I think remember maybe that's true every of me too. beat. Mm-hmm. But it is, it's perfect. Yeah. And it is jaw on the floor, pins and needles. What is the next word going to be? Yeah. Yeah. So good. It's real. So, so. They, I mean, they stick the landing. Some of these yep. movies that even we've done. We're yep. like, yeah, it loses some steam at the end, but I think right. it's part. It's because of the structure. It's because of the writing. Yep. Um. The the acting is so good. The idea, just the yep. idea, the idea is so good and so great. They could have done a lot of things where they didn't stick the landing like that. They could have gone too far. Yeah. Which they don't. I I think the ending is the very very button ending is funny where the guys in the the security guys are like, what else is on? Oh my gosh, totally. Goosebumps. Yep. I mean, the Truman Bar, freaking yep. genius. I mean, all the people, they're all us. We never even mentioned that. Like, <laughs> they're all how we were dressing. All, all over the world. 
<laughs> the guy in the bathtub, the two security guys. You know who the, the guy two in the ladies. bathtub is? No. Napoleon from Bill and Ted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Genius. I didn't until I looked it up. I was like, who That's is that good. guy? <laughs> um, another thing that I – speaking of the bar, another thing that I want to talk about on the – we can push this to the result show is something yep. that really stood out to me this time was the guy said, oh, we have all that stuff on the greatest hits tape. Oh, yeah. And my yeah. question there is what would be on your greatest hits tape if you were oh, in Truman Show? Man, dude. <laughs> I love – okay. Greatest hits, Jim Carrey. Yep. I, I didn't even mention my favorite line of the movie. We'll do that then. Oh, whoa, what a tease. Mm. Um, well, now it's up to you, listener. We want to know, is The Truman Show a perfect movie? The best place to vote is on Instagram. Just look up Two Gomers on Instagram and you'll find us there. And our social media maestro, Lindsay, will be posting a, uh, a what's it called? A poll this coming oh. <laughs> week that you can vote yes or no. Thank you to our webmaster, Adam, Jason for our graphics, Davis for our music, the aforementioned Lindsay, our social media maestro. Our next movie, I don't even know what it is. I didn't look. Uh, Shoot, I have my schedule. Pull uh, it out. Dude, keep talking, dude. Uh, okay, I have one more. I have one more <laughs> final one. Okay. Ed Harris's little hat. Oh, that hat and those glasses. Those, those glasses, nineties glasses. Yeah, you kind of had those. Oh, Batman. <gasps> Batman, nineteen eighty nine. Are oh, we there oh. already? <sighs> oh, okay, baby. we go from ninety eight to eighty nine. Wow. Both summer movies, very different. Yep. We are going to talk Tim Burton, who I heard was up to direct this movie, that, and which I can see, but would have been a very different movie. Oh yeah, I mean, imagine the Truman Show with Gary Oldman. Mm -hmm. Tim Burton and Danny Elfman. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, mean, I kind of like. In I think we've talked about this before. Where like my heaven is to see all the alternate, yeah, <laughs> versions of these movies. Yeah. Like, yep. I, I would really like to see a Tim Burton Truman Show. It wouldn't wow. not there. There would not be the subtlety that Peter Weir brought. It would be a lot yeah, yeah. weirder. Um, yep. we'll talk more Tim Burton, and don't forget. We told people we're going to talk The Flash when we talk mm. Batman 1989. Yes. I'm going to have to rewatch it again. And Spider-Man No Way Home. <laughs> no, that's not the one I want you to watch. Oh, okay. Coming home. <laughs> no, no. None of the homes. <laughs> Just Universe, put the homes out of your mind. Even though you did see the one of them with your mom and took a picture and you can't remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so next movie batman 1989 uh all right dude great ep super fun man i'm noticing right now we're at 142 on our recording oh, the exact number it? now we have to put the trailer and everything so that's not going to work but i feel very no. proud of myself um okay what am i saying now bye everybody and happy watching the 1989 tim burton michael keaton batman <sighs> Amazing. All right, let's stop that. One, two, three, stop, save. All right, I need to um, check in with uh, one person real quick. Okay, I'm going to go to that. We're supposed to have our, um, our firewood delivery this mm. afternoon. Okay. I just got to call them and make sure they're still coming. I'm going to go to the bathroom quick. All right, wait, can you stop recording? Oh, yeah. Bye, everybody. <laughs>